catch up to get back where I was, that at the end of the day, you have to be here. I mean, you can't afford not to be here. And so that is so true. So when you guys are out helping people, just really emphasize, just like we were, the, we heard a few minutes ago, that you need to be here. There's something special about being here and seeing everybody's face here and the energy, but there's so much positivity. There are so many good people in this room. You have to experience the comp comprehend it. You have to be here. And thank you for being here. Wow, thank you. you you're, you're now a meeting goer guy. Yes, I am. <laughs> so I know that everyone's dying to figure this out, but uh, um, t tell us a little bit about um, young Hulk Hogan. You know, uh, when did you know that you wanted to really be a uh, you know a pro wrestler? You know, what, what got that thing going? Well, it's kind of like anything else in life. If you have a passion for it, you know, and it's it's just tearing you up and eating you alive. You have to follow that little voice inside of you, and that's what was going on with me. You know, I was doing anything I could to avoid working a real job. <laughs> you know, I played I played sports in high school, but I really didn't dig in because, because I was playing music. I was playing in a rock and roll band. Hey, did you guys hear that? Yeah. And, and I did that, did that for, for quite a long time. And then, but I was always a wrestling fan. It just kept burning at me, burning at me. I watched it on TV and where I grew up in Tampa, Florida, it was like the hotbed of professional wrestling. So, you know, one thing led to another. The wrestlers kept coming to hear the band I was playing in. I realized they weren't these big monsters that were going to kill you. They were actually normal people like everybody else. One thing led to another, and all I could think about was getting in the wrestling business. But my mindset was always the final outcome, just like your mindset should be. You shouldn't worry about, oh my gosh, how am I going to get another leg underneath me, or how am I going to get three more people? Your final mindset should always be greatness, you know, and don't worry about the how, you know. Because whatever you believe in, that higher power, the energy, the, the spirit, the, the God presence, whatever drives you, whatever that little voice is inside of you, it's going to take care of all that. Just work as hard as you can, like it all depends on you. So that's what my mindset was. When I decided to get in the professional wrestling business, I didn't know how I was going to do it, but my mindset was, I'm going to be the greatest professional wrestler that ever walked in the ring. I didn't know how, but that, that was it. Well... That's a, that's a beautiful segue into the next question because um, uh, knowing that your focus was all, uh, it wasn't necessarily focused on success, it was focused on just going out there and being the best, right? So what, but that being said, what was it like being the number one most recognized person in the entire industry? I mean, um, what, what were some of your favorite highlights in the process? And did you, did you, did you really think that, or dream that you'd see that level of notoriety and success along the way? Man, we could talk for hours about those, that triple threat question. No, I mean, when you're talking about highlights, what was the beginning of it? Uh, what was it like being number one? Number I mean, one. The number one most recognized. Well, well the, the crazy thing is, you know, just like when, when a group of people or, or there's a, an idea, when we all work together, it can, everything's, everything in life is a run. If you have a marriage, it's one year, like Kim Kardashian and, and, and Humphreys. You know, that's, that's what we call a run in the wrestling business, you know. And, and all of a sudden, I had a 23-year marriage, and that was a little bit longer run. But what was so crazy about the wrestling business, and, and i got to relate it to this company, because if you're loyal and you dedicate and you believe, a run can go on forever. And, and that's what happened. Once I got in that position of being the greatest wrestler ever, it was just unbelievable because the fans were so loyal and they, they stuck with me through thick and thin. So, I mean, I got on top in the wrestling business in 1978. I wrestled Andre the Giant in Shea Stadium, you know. And that, that was way before the 94,000 people that's still an indoor attendance record, but indoor attendance record. But that whole situation of being on top, you know, still remains today because the fans are so loyal. And when I go out on Impact Wrestling, which I do a show right here in Orlando, it's on Spike TV, the fans are still there. I mean, it's just unbelievable how loyal the fans are. And, and throughout the, the whole career that I've had, it's hard to say because this, I didn't say this, but last week there's a company called Fremantle, and they do a show called X Factor in American Idol. And one of the reasons I kind of threw this second chances out, out here, that idea was, Fremantle came to me and the thought 
will not leave my head. Fremantle came to me, even though they do, do American Idol on X Factor, and they said, Hulk Hogan, we'd like to do a show with you about giving people second chances. And what they did was they took, they took, the, Hulk, they took the Hulk Hogan name and my likeness with, with the mustache and the bald head, and they did a test market across the board, and they found out last week that Hulk Hogan is the most recognizable face in the world, I guess because I'm so ugly. But, but, but worldwide, worldwide, more people know me than Muhammad Ali or the Pope. So what I'm trying to say is, no, no, and that's the truth. When they called me back and said, oh my God, your numbers blew through the roof. I was excited to hear that because you never know, you know. But that's what I'm trying to say about this company. If you guys stick together the way you are right now, the greatness and what can happen with this company will blow your mind. Ten years from now, you'll never would realize what could possibly happen just from this moment. Because just like the wrestling fans are loyal, everybody in this room is loyal to helping people and loyal to this company because that's what this company's all about. So right now, I'm still the most recognizable, ugly face in the world. And when you talk about wrestling, a lot of people, most of the people still associate wrestling with Hulk Hogan. So it's kind of like this run could go on forever. You know, and I had great moments. Yeah. I think you just said Hulk for president. <laughs> you, know, you know what scares me about that? Is that if you just make common sense decisions about war or no war, education or no education, helping the elderly or not helping the elderly, maybe a flat tax and treat everybody fairly, you're right, you probably win. All right, I'm in. No, but, and, and I'll, I'll quit talking right in a second, but my, all, all these moments in my career, slamming Andre the Giant in front of 94,000 people, wrestling one of the most popular wrestlers ever, The Rock, and having the crowd, there you go, and having the crowd cheer for me instead of him after all these years, I mean, there have been some great moments, so the career could go on forever. Well, and it's, um, when, like you said, it could go on forever. It's like a legacy that you've created, which is, which is very, very powerful because, you know, you've touched so many lives and so many generations. And isn't that what we all want to try to accomplish anyway? Amen. Isn't that what we want to do to create for our families? And the only, the only person that can do that is you. You're right. You know, Hulk loves you, but he can't do it for you. You're right. He can be an example to let you know what's possible, but it, it's you. Well, brother, you are so right because you can have somebody mentor 